How's it going, everyone? Maryland here, and that's right, it's time for more Terraria. But you know what? We're on the title screen. Why? Well, because this is going to be a little bit different of an episode. We're going to be building on the main world, don't worry. But there's been something I've been wanting to show you and do for myself for a while now. And that's go into settings on the main menu here, go to cursor, and then you can change the cursor's color. Now this is pretty handy. Previously it's been red this whole time, but you know what? As you've seen, oftentimes a lot of stuff can be happening on screen. So changing the cursor color to something like white might not be a bad idea. Plus, you wanna change a border color for it. See, in this case, now it should be super obvious where the heck it is. You can adjust like the color scheme of it. Um, just try to find something that makes it super obvious where it is. Um, but this is definitely recommended before moving forward because otherwise you might run into some serious trouble. So find a color that works well that probably won't get in the way with a whole bunch of different explosions or anything like that. I guess I'm just gonna go with probably a blue and a white. That should be noticeable enough. Anyway, let's get into the main world of Terraria. There we go. See, isn't this so much more noticeable? Yeah, it used to be that this was hidden away in some configuration file, or I think it might have even not been an option entirely a while back. But yeah, now it's definitely easily available, which is great news. So. A couple things I guess I should mention before I start building. First of all, in my uh, greenhouse here, I went ahead and I bought a whole bunch of planters. I accidentally bought way too many day bloom planters, but oh well. I bought some more planters. I'm gonna swap out uh, some of these water leaf ones for the actual water leaf planters. They unlock at the dryad after you've beaten certain bosses. So now that I've beaten the bosses, I have all of them unlocked except for Fire Blossoms. And I should probably harvest these things just because I have a great supply of pretty much all of the plants right now, which is good. But you know what? Going into uh, the next phase, we're going to want to make sure that we have plenty of plants for potions and stuff. So yeah, also uh, holding in control works very well while planting things. Um, all right, so yeah. The other thing I was going to mention about this is I was looking at it and I could put an entirely separate row between each of these rows. Originally I had it so there was like, I don't know, three blocks space between each planter. Well, they only actually need one block above them in order to grow, which is excellent. So yeah, I mean, I didn't really have that many plants when I first started making this thing, but now to optimize things, I'm going to compress it a bit. So then there's like a whole ton of planter boxes. Uh, so we'll have more plants that we know what to do with. I still haven't actually switched over the chests, but oh well, and I did get another gold bunny. Now I also did a little bit of fighting against the Eye of Cthulhu, it was a blood moon. And it's like, ah, you know what? Let's just go ahead and burn all my suspicious looking eyes. So I fought the Eye of Cthulhu a whole bunch of times. It was a lot of fun, and uh, I did it all in one blood moon, which is kind of nice. I mean, it's not really challenging at this point. Darn it, I forgot to put back the regrowth staff again. But yeah, that gave me some extra money, and it gave me something else kind of fun. I guess I'll show you really quick. Um, it gave me an Eye of Cthulhu mask. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I also do have a ton of demonite ore right now. In fact, if I feel like it, I could totally sell this stuff for almost one platinum, which is pretty nice. I don't know if I want to do that or if I want to use it as a building material. At first I thought a building material would be a good idea, but then I was looking at it and it's, it's kind of weird looking, so I don't know if I want to go that route. Um, yeah, I did a little bit of fishing as well. So I did get the angler hat, I think it is. Uh, no, the angler vest, yeah, that thing. And I've been getting some more iron crates and wooden crates, which is good. Uh, I guess I'll take these things out from here. I just wanted to make sure I remembered them in a previous episode, so that's why they're in there. Uh, but I did mention them, of course. Yeah, the ammo box is pretty nice. We might end up using this, might not. We'll have to see. 
Um, yeah, let's see, what else? I don't really think there's that much else. Um, the goal for today's episode, I don't think I'm actually going to be doing any, any really challenging fights. I wouldn't mind fighting the Queen Bee a few more times because there's something I wanted to get from her and maybe even the Eater of Worlds too. We'll have to see, but again, these aren't really that much of challenges at this point. I mean, the Bee's Knees is just serious beesness, I tell ya. So yeah. Mostly, I just want to work on some houses. In fact, I was actually thinking about it. As cool as it is to have this house kind of as a central location for all the NPCs and stuff, I think maybe it's time that they move out. You know, we built some houses actually dedicated to the characters kind of around here because after we fight this next boss, Things are going to get pretty tricky, and, you know, this freedom to build kind of wherever we want will be impeded. I mean, we're going to have a lot tougher monsters fighting us, I'll try to say without spoiling too much. Um, so, my goals are, I want to have a nice building for some of the NPCs. In fact, I might actually, uh, I don't know, I might move some of them in together, but the point is, I want to use this house here as like my storage room so i'll tear down the floors replace them with like platforms something like that um just so i don't have all my stuff all over the place as you can see i'm running out of room here and i really want a location for me to put all my chests and all my smelting things and stuff like that oh i want to buy another safe now that i have 20 20 gold i might as well i mean i got plenty of money it's just you know, <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I had a safe here as well, so I don't have to drop it all the time. But yeah, so, got a lot of building to do. I want to get some materials. This should be a lot of fun, but it should also be quite a bit of work. But I think it'll be worth it in the end. My only regret is I didn't get a uh, living wood or a living loom. I think that would have made this look so much better. But, oh well, you know what? It's fine. This gets the job done. Anyway... Let's do a whole bunch of resource gathering and building.
this was one heck of a build, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know what? I think I will save working on the village until later because I really wanted to make like an arboretum or some kind of like, I don't know, place for me to grow my trees, right? So yeah, I've been at this for several hours now, but I think it looks really cool. I don't know why that block isn't there. But yeah, so this is the arboretum. Um, I have no clue how to work camera mode, to be honest, but, um, yeah, let's see, uh, no, I don't have a clue, <laughs> but yeah, um, in a nutshell, there is the, uh, yeah, actually, this is something that I really do need to learn, um, because you can, uh, take, like, cool screenshots and stuff, I don't know, that's something I'll look into, but, more or less, you get the idea. So, the main things that I need to talk about here, um, alright, so, you need, in fact, let me get my handy ruler here, you need to have 16 tiles, like this, in order for trees to grow. They cannot have any walls directly behind the sapling. However, fences, or, uh, yeah, these are fences, those will, uh, those won't count against it, so that's why I have the bottom row of all these as fences. Um, I have them spaced three apart just to make sure no wild bushes will appear, because that can sometimes inhibit their spawning. Um, let's see, so I have snow here to grow the boreal wood. Just put an acorn down and it'll start growing, which is kind of nice. Um, up here, this is where it gets a little tricky. So, palm wood. This needs 32 blocks of clearance in order to grow. Yeah, I ran into an issue where I thought it was 24. It's actually mahogany that's 24. Mahogany. Um, but yeah, tw uh, 32 blocks of clearance will do. And I was reading on the wiki that you can't have anything uh, directly behind it, which is probably why this one isn't growing. Um, so let me fix this. All we need to do is just break the wall. You can barely even tell, but that will cause it to grow, hopefully. All right, so I'll get to over there in just a moment. Up here, we've got the mahogany growing. This needs jungle grass in order to grow, and to do that, you need to get jungle grass seeds and mud. And yeah, you can get those over in the jungle, just slash the grass. I guess I should probably put a uh, fence or something here. <laughs> it's not fully complete, my bad. But yeah, I've been at this for hours. I'll do that later, you get the gist of it. Um, yeah, so then I can chop this down, any of these down, at my leisure, which will be cool. So out here, oh, by the way, using the heavy workbench that I made, um, I don't, I think I made that while I was building stuff, so I didn't actually make it on camera, but, oh, I really should put, like, walls or something behind here, or maybe just make them platforms, because stuff's gonna spawn here like crazy, because I'm so high up, but, yeah, over here, we have a corruption, sort of, it's very contained, just make sure you're not using, like, you know, stone to build with, but, yeah, as long as you're using, like, decent building materials, uh, you'll be fine. So I set down corruption seeds, or corrupted seeds, whatever they are, um, the corrupt seeds, on some grass, and that will, uh, change this all to the corrupt grass. And most importantly, that will let me grow these ebonwood trees, which, I don't know, could be nice to have. Figure I'd better have them here than have to go out and get them if ever I want to build with them. And then over here, I have a very nice blank area, which we'll be filling that up soon. Not just yet, but soon. But yeah, this is my big arboretum project. I think I'm glad I made it. It's quite large, I have to say, but at the same time, I think it covers just about everything I need other than crimson, but I don't have a crimson in this world, so it's not gonna matter. Um, I'm gonna be moving my arena this is not really the best place for it anymore, but yeah, uh, maybe work on a support pillar over here. Maybe make these platforms or something, but you get the idea. But anyway, that is now my arboretum. It has plenty of stuff. 
for me to uh, to get. I might do a few tweaks here or there. But yeah, it, it was a pretty big build. Um, this is the heavy workbench, by the way. It's not that difficult to make. You just need either lead or iron and then some wood. And it sounds awesome, but it's not like the best thing in the world. And to make those gates, you need some lead or iron and some wood. And then this thing, and that makes those cool gates which you saw over there. They're tall gates, so they're five tiles tall, and they don't, like, take up any room horizontally when you open them, so they're actually pretty convenient. I like it. Oh, man. All right, so we'll work on the village probably next time. Um, I do want to expand still. I got a bit distracted with this arboretum, but you know what? I've got a greenhouse. I've got an arboretum, so... I should be set as far as like kind of growable things go. Having an arena would be good, but really I just want to have like some houses and a village and some stuff like that around because that would definitely make things just a lot nicer over here. I could even put like houses kind of branching out on this. That's not a bad idea. You guys will have to let me know. I might just go for it anyway, but that's not a terrible idea either to have this kind of like a big complex. See, like I could maybe do a similar thing here, have like something branch out and have like a little house. Not like a big house like that, but you know, a little something. Although I did want to place the corruption over here farther away from wherever I'm building because NPCs, they don't like it when there's a lot of corruption nearby and they might not move in or might even just say, hey, I've had it with this, I'm done. And just leave or something. I mean, you just gotta contain the corruption, that's fine, but yeah. Anyway, got all the wood in the world, and my poor inventory needs some sorting in a bad way. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you on the next episode of Maryland's Terraria Adventure. See you next time, village people. Something something YMCA? Eh, never mind. <laughs>